You know, years ago, if you had a glass of wine, chances are it would come from France or Italy, one of the more traditional locations. But winemaking has spread all over the world. Who hasn't enjoyed a glass of Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, the other side of the world? And even here in Dorking in Surrey. Look, it is huge and English winemaking has taken ground. So innovations, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And in fact, if you stay watching, uh, maybe we can give you a taste that you've never had before. I've been to visit Chris Murphy at Marks and Spencer's headquarters, and he told me about how they were pushing back the boundaries of winemaking. Chris, how would you say that M&S has been an innovator? In what way is M&S an innovator? Well, I think we've always been innovators in our food business. Um, when you think of our fresh produce, we virtually invented the ready meals, and we were certainly pioneers with party food, which mm. is particularly popular at this time of the year. So, specifically in wine, though, how does one be an innovator in that area? It's slightly more difficult because you can't really reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Wine is the fermented juice of the freshly gathered grape. But if you look back 30 years ago, we were probably buying from half a dozen countries. Mm -hmm. And if you look at our catalogue today, it's more likely to be way over 20. Okay, so that must mean, because you've got a long history here at M&S, haven't you? You've done a lot of travelling during that time, looking for a new wine for us. I have been very lucky to travel the world, Nigel. Um, and I think M&S was among the pioneers, for example, of introducing new world wines. Mm -hmm. I think we were the first to introduce wines from the old world labelled simply with their grape varieties, okay. for example. Mm -hmm. um, and we're constantly looking at new innovations technologically, either with our winemakers or the rest of the team, working with people, developing new techniques. M&S were the first to make ready-made Buck's Fizz. Oh, yeah. The first people to make ready-made mulled wine. Yes. Seen, they're just staples in the catalogue now, but we developed those. So where is M&S travelling to now to find the next new thing? Well, for example, this year alone we've introduced a whole new range that the team has put together of wines, that, of wines from countries which had a fantastic history but perhaps had lost their way a little bit, mm -hmm. but now are right back up in the, uh, in the picture. We've called it Eastern Mediterranean, but it embraces countries such as Turkey, Greece, the Lebanon, um, Croatia, Slovenia, and these are top-notch wines. Excellent. Okay. Um, now, I'm looking at, at this here. This is Brazilian. Now, you know, Brazil, I would know for Bossa Nova at Jazz FM. We, we love that, all the Latin music, and uh, I would be familiar with Brazilian beer, but not wine. So is this any good? They're fantastic, and these are wines where they're part of our wine club, and what the wine club enables us to do is push the boundaries a little bit. So mm. these are the first Brazilian wines that we've actually sold. Okay, so if somebody in the wine club likes this, and they say, hey, this is from Brazil, that's how it picks up and yeah, people start so. to... It's something yeah. that perhaps they wouldn't ordinarily buy, mm. but if we, can, if we put it in there and they taste it and the wines are delicious, I mean, yeah. let's have a look. So, um, interestingly, is this produced in a traditional way, in other words, a sort of Western European way in Brazil, or yeah. do they have their own style? No, very much so. They're, they're modern and... Um, Can I open? Please do. Right, okay. Uh, great. So it's Pinot Grigio and Riesling. Pinot Grigio and Riesling. Quite an unusual mix. I thought I should pour on this one. You've been pouring for me for the last three weeks. <laughs> right. Thank you, Nigel. This looks... So pale, it almost looks like water. <laughs> I'm, showing, I'm assuming it's not. <laughs> well, let's have a smell. The other interesting thing here, Nigel, is yeah. that this is 2012 vintage. Okay. So we're in 2012, and we pushed the supplier, well, working with him, but pushed him to get the freshest. So you pushed the supplier to get this out early, to get a really fresh Absolutely. taste to it, yeah? Okay, and this is important with these um, white wines, isn't it? Absolutely. Now that's clean, clean as a whistle on the nose. Mm. That has a lot more depth of flavour than I was expecting because it looked watery. 
it does, it's almost water white, but it's got real intensity. And again, we talked about minerality before, mm. and this has got that sort of steely mineral thing, yeah. and I think that comes from the Riesling grape. Do you know, I think also that has entertainment value because you bring that up, that is a, honestly, for, for somebody who enjoys white burgundy a great deal, that, if I brought that out at a dinner party, people would say, oh, that, that tastes nice. And I would go, yep, and it's from Brazil. From Brazil. And, you know, people are going to remember your dinner party because you did something different. Absolutely. So, you've seen what it looks like, but what does it taste like, these innovative wines? Well, we've got a case, a special case of Eastern Mediterranean wines for you to win with M&S and Jazz FM this week. So all you have to do is visit jazzfm.com, answer the question online there, and you could be a winner. So, with M&S, the supermarket with a winemaker's soul. This is Jazz FM. I'm Nigel Williams.